who told me he's been at Dominion for 28 years. And so my first thought is like, how the attitudes at Dominion, both from the leadership, the folks working there, versus even your customers changed as it relates to climate change over that time? Yeah, so um, it's 28 years. I started as an intern actually 30 years ago, but I was 12, so. <laughs> um, it has changed tremendously. You know, I've talked to some of our younger colleagues, and I've told them that the industry has changed more in the past probably five to seven years than the other period of time that I've been in the company. So one, I mean, we continue to focus on safe, safely providing reliable, affordable, and increasingly clean energy. And all of those things matter. Um, you, you asked about what are some of the things that change. If you'd have went to an industry meeting 10 years ago, there would have been a lot of argument about does climate change actually exist. The last uh, meetings I've gone to for he, uh, CEOs, there's no debate about climate change. It's really just the, a debate about the pace that we get to achieving some of these goals. And so that's a great thing because now we're talking about what are the solutions versus actually does it really exist? And you know we're driven one by our, our goals as a company, um, and as an energy company, we want to be the most sustainable energy company in the country. And two, we're driven by our customers' goals, and I'll come back to that uh, in just a minute. So as you think about this energy transformation, we'll talk about some of the renewable energy programs if you want, I'll, I'll go there. But you also have to think about the grid because as you move from tens of assets with large generation assets, now you're, you're gonna have thousands of assets. So it requires new transmission infrastructure, new distribution infrastructure, and it has to be more resilient. Uh, I don't know about you, but the lights go out in my neighborhood Within 15 minutes, a lot of my neighbors are on Facebook. It's like, we live in a third world country. What's going on? So, and then my wife sometimes responds, and it's not. Yeah. Uh, but it, the expectations of customers have changed, right? And the weather patterns have changed. We definitely have seen four hurricanes, for example, more Cat 5 hurricanes than, than I can recall. So as far as the renewable uh, programs that we have, uh, first, we'll start with offshore wind. So, uh, we bought offshore wind leases in 2013. So our CEO at the time, Tom Farrell, had the vision that he said our service territory goes from Virginia to the Rock of Gibraltar. That's, that's what he said. So don't try to look at it on geographic. That's what he told us. So we put the first test turbines in federal waters uh, in October 21. So there are two six megawatt test turbines and they perform very well. So it gives us confidence in our larger offshore wind project. And it is the largest in the country. It's 2.6 gigawatts, 176 turbines, almost 15 megawatts apiece, 27 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach. And development's going well on that project, expect to be in service uh, at the end of 2026. Uh, secondly, we're building a lot, a lot of solar. We have the second largest portfolio of solar by any electric utility in the nation. Um, we actually started, when I was in our merchant generation group, building solar in 2013. Uh, a more focused effort in Virginia over the past five years or so. 2,000 megawatts uh, of solar in operation, another 8,000 megawatts of solar in development right now. Um, one of the key uh, innovations that we need is energy storage. If you think about uh, Christmas Eve, we set an all-time peak for our system. It was hour ending eight o'clock. The sun wasn't shining very much at eight o'clock on Christmas Eve. And so when you have uh, additional solar on the system, you'll need to be able to capture that energy so that you can use it in times of darkness, especially in the wintertime. We have the largest uh, energy storage uh, facility in the world called Bath County Pump Storage. It's 3,000 megawatts in Bath County. Uh, battery storage today is four hours or eight hour installations. And so we're working with some companies on longer duration storage that will be multi-day in the 100 hour range. We have about 16 megawatts of battery storage uh, installed today on pilot projects, one in Power 10, two in Hanover. Um, and uh, we'll have a couple of pilot projects that will be installed on the longer duration, 24, 25, 
We have another 100 megawatts more traditional energy storage uh, in development, um, and we'll go from there. On, uh, and then renewable natural gas, uh, one of the things I'll talk much about on the electric side of business, we are working with uh, partners with hard and dairy farmers on renewable natural gas. We think it's part of the mix, at least in the, uh, in the short term. On electric transportation, which the transportation sector is actually the largest CO2 emitter now because the energy sector has had pretty significant reductions. Uh, we want to help our customers uh, to electrify, and so um, we have a number of uh, tariffs that help support customers who want to uh, install chargers for whether it's residential, fleet, uh, et cetera. We have uh, an autonomous electric shuttle in Fairfax County that we're piloting right now, and hopefully that will support uh, maybe Green City uh, uh, longer term. We also have been helping with the jurisdictions on school buses. So we did 50 uh, school buses across the state under a pilot program. Uh, we're supporting jurisdictions who receive money from the state as part of uh, the VW settlement. And so we're helping with charging infrastructure there um, and helping with grants from the IIGA and the IRA money uh, from the federal government. And so those are, and then Lastly, on electric, uh, electric transportation, we're also changing over our own light duty fleet. Um, there been some challenges with supply chain, just not been in other areas, but uh, we're working on that and in sending our employees uh, for electrification as well. Incentives on. Can we ask them, how many of you all drive an electric vehicle? Eh, anybody? How many of you all thinking about maybe driving an electric vehicle? So, yeah. right, I have one. I do too. I love my. Um, but we let uh, colleagues that are our job charge free. Um, we provide incentives for purchasing electric vehicles, and all of our local offices and almost all of our power stations now have uh, charges as well. So, just some of the ways we're trying to help. All right, thanks. All right, going to 